so I can just I'll scan that and email it to everybody today. They sent it to me. It came in. So. Yeah, I think it said Chief Executive Officer or the Chairman of the Board. Yeah, that said or uh, a designee. Or designee so yeah, so. Uh, Steve, maybe we can just email back and forth on that. When is the meeting? October 29th. I'm trying to figure out my schedule with That's that. Next, so next it's Monday? Next Monday. Monday, yeah. Monday. So. Um, what is time is the meeting? Uh, I believe it's an evening meeting. I don't, I left my my copy there at the office, so that's why in the morning I can send you the information, but. Mr. Chair, can I ask a question? Oh, absolutely, Thank yeah, you. it's the first I hear this. Um, Mr. Sullivan, is this an addition to the person that's elected? You know, they, they elect from each, there's an election for each town that's involved with um, BOTEC. Right. So this is an addition to that. Right, so somebody sit on with the, with the collective bargaining or have input in there <coughs> from the member communities. Doesn't mean that our member would be the one elected from what I'm reading, but it would be, we'd gather together and elect a representative from there, so. So obviously that's an important time for us to put our input in as well, explain that next year, you know, we're looking at a $275,000 increase from them. So anything they can do to keep their costs down would be, you know, beneficial. Well, Mr. Chair, are you gonna be able to attend? I am here, I don't have anything on. It's just to go find out what's going on, right? Yeah, and it would it would elect one of the representatives from the from the member districts, and at least we can put something together and and be able to speak about our circumstances. Because I don't think from the uh, from the selectmen and from the administration that's always being said during that. Yeah. You know what time it is, or I'm sorry, I don't. All right. But just, if you want to send it to me, then mm -hmm. if there's an issue, I can have either Mrs. Begley or, or, or Mrs. Windsor back. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. or yourself. So, Are you around Monday night? I am around Monday night. And so then after that, that they're going to they're going to pick somebody out of this pool. Right. And then after that, you don't attend, so it's really only to attend one night. Right, attend well, one night. Well, then maybe night. I will try to go. Hmm. So. And, uh, Maybe if, if there's a selectman there, they might elect a selectman over. Mm -hmm. We need to have some say mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. because yeah. that, that's becoming an increasing drain. It's a big chunk of money. Uh, big chunk of Every money. Every year. And now. Next year, it's yeah. another two something, right? 275000 probably. Over a quarter of a million dollars. Plus the usual 9% increase on top of that. Yeah. Plus the $30,000. Yeah. Um, if I could just ask one more question, and it's not regarding this, it's kind of a TA's report. Yeah. Um, Mr. Sullivan, where do we stand with the requirements from the DOR that we have to have in for the town to set our tax rate by November 1st? Well, we wouldn't have the management letter, but I've, sp I've received a message from Jerry Perry. He's on vacation now. Most likely he and I will be speaking on October 31st. And whatever comes out of that, I'll, I'll let the board know. Okay, great. Because I, I we had the letter from February. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you. I'm sorry. There was we a, the letter from we had a letter from February, giving us three items that needed to to be achieved uh, by November first. And I just want to know we where we meet were. We those three items, correct, Mr. Sullivan? To your no, knowledge, we will not. We would have to have the management letter by then, which we will not have. Uh, Powers of Sullivan scheduled to come in November 14th. They have been receiving some of the balances on there. Uh, but Powers and Sullivan is our accounting, myself, and our local DOR, DOR rep have all been in contact with one another. Okay. I have informed them that we're not going to have that for November 1st. So because it's not would, a shock to them. If they come in the 14th, you would expect it by the 30th? I would expect it. So we'll have everything lined up. So when they come in, you're probably looking at a uh, three to four days of on site. And then the rest of the offsite to prepare that as well. And the DOR is fine with that, Mr. Perry. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't Perry. say he's, he's. I'm sure he's not fine with right. it, but he's uh, acceptable. It's going to be. I'm. I'm waiting to speak to him on the what he's going to say on there. Um, I. I'm not going to speak 
for him on that. That would be a mistake. <laughs> Probably. <local> <laughs> what about in the local representative, though, is the person who works for him, right? Correct. And he's in the loop or she's in the loop? He's in the loop. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure if his or her boss wasn't going to accept what you're doing, he would tell you or she would tell you, right? Yeah, I'm, sir, I'm, I'm certain that uh, the, ne the next time I speak with Mr. Perry, it's not going to be the, the best of conversations, but, uh, you know, no. explain to him what we're working on, how we're doing it, and, and the actions we're taking to make sure that everything's being done correctly. You know, my commentary would be that I don't blame him, quite frankly. We've spent a ton of dough here over the last, last night we're arguing about $3,000 for a recycling lane. And we've spent between BMG, Powers and Sullivan, over a quarter of a million dollars, I bet, over the last two years. Mm -hmm. And here we sit again. Right. And you think it's more, Mr. Kudish? No, I see I you shaking your head. No, I'm saying it's, it's, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Thank you. That was my point, sir. And here we sit again, and we still don't have the answers, right? And that's just, I mean, we talk about the school district increasing 275, and here we are spending money like fools on accountants, and we're still not ready for November 1st. So that's not, that's not good. The one major difference this time is that... You have a major difference? Yeah, we've kept them in the loop until there's no surprise. We let them know what's been going on and what's been happening. Derek's been extremely... Uh, on time with all of it, because it makes a big difference. They don't mind having, as long as it's not a surprise, they can deal with it. But when it's a surprise, they won't deal with it. I understand that. Like, like any bureaucrats, they don't like ambushes. Can, can I, I understand that, but my point is, is that we've spent between those two firms over a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, and not gotten the results. Over the last year and a half, and we're still sitting here yeah. asking the same question. Are we going to be ready for November 1st? And the answer is no. Still no. Well, just as a follow-up question, um, Derek, can you kind of just tell us what in the process creates the delay? Uh, I would actually ask the town accountant to come up to speak to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Kodish, good evening. Good evening. Um, first off, I think uh, in terms of going back and getting the numbers from FY11 to FY12, the rollover numbers, those are being evaluated to see because, as Derek spoke about last night, some of these numbers are in whole numbers versus decimals, so they didn't carry over correctly. Um, that's one issue. There were some linkage issues that um, BMAG went and changed within VADAR. So when Powers and Sutton originally looked at the trial balance on October or September 25th, the accounts didn't tie out, so, we, so Craig identified that for us and gave us a heads up. And um, he's actually waiting for an updated trial balance. We can take a look at it and they can load it in their system. Uh, we had to get the 53 Gs ready. Those I think are all set now. Um, and then there's one issue with school. We're off about $15,000 in that. We're showing a higher number on school expenditures in their showing um, and just uh, general learning curve for me municipal accounting you you know UMIS and VADAR but I am in constant contact with uh, Powers on with Craig and telling them you know where we stand and getting them ready so by me talking to him and him talking to DOR he's gaining confidence of Derek and myself so DOR is not blindsided Thank you. Well, question. I guess my question is this, um, and I understand I understand the issues that, that um, happened and, and you didn't create them and Mr. Sullivan didn't create them. I mean, it, it was the circumstances and I get that. But going forward, is there going to be a plan in place so that there is, this is absolutely not going to happen again next year? Well, I don't, I, hopefully DOI will there won't be a, a post deadline of November 1st. I mean, uh, Powell was telling if they wanted to come in earlier, they couldn't be based upon their schedule. Mm -hmm. And we weren't ready for them anyway. So that, it, it but that just, doesn't really answer my question. Um, that is her question. 
That right. So what next are we going to do for next year? Right. So that this doesn't happen again. Well, Say it is November first. Right. Say we it is November first. What can we do starting November second of this year? Right. To be, prepare for the following year and put um, procedures in place so that it would be unlikely that there would be a delay. Right. Okay. I just had this conversation with, with Debbie in my mm -hmm. office. I said I think the best thing that we should do is after six months, sometime March 1st, we should have a six-month review of each department to see where we stand, budget versus actual. So when, you know, June comes, June 15th or June 1st, we don't say, oh, geez, mm -hmm. you know, municipal maintenance is over or water pollution or harbor master or any of the, you know, over or under. So we have to start to you know, do line item transfers. And simultaneously, we have to see, I mean, Powers and Sullivan has an audit schedule that starts September 1st, September, October, November. They're busy for three months, and they're oh, trying to... Yeah, but see, that, that doesn't make sense to me. Shouldn't we be booking our schedule with Powers and Sullivan now for in the middle of September next year? Or? Hmm. If, they, if they'll, if you know, it's, is that not, we're making reservations I, early. Mr. Chairman, it, it, it sounds crazy, but we have to fit into their schedule, and they have a schedule. Well, in a year in advance. They basically so have, yeah, but if we say um, they may have other commitments, like right. But if we right. we, we had an agreement though. with these folks, we may have to prove that we're ready for that time. Co correct burnt, as well. They were burnt in the past by us, where they booked week for us to be on site we weren't right. ready for them right. whatsoever we wasted their time yeah, and their time is very valuable and I and I understand that and yeah. I appreciate that that is a response but I personally feel that there shouldn't be any surprises in the accounting office that if we are if there's a monthly reconciliation and if there's communication between the treasurers and the accounting office and the town administrator then there shouldn't be any surprises correct you should be ready we should be ready at a moment's notice. I guess this is all a way of saying that it, it sounds like you two gentlemen are on top of it now. So, you know, but my going question forward, is going forward, what are we going to do yeah. to be on yeah, time I mean, next year? You know, we know we have them come in every year, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, my suggestion to you would be you sit down with Craig or Mr. Sullivan there and, and set up a five year plan. Five years. And if he's not ready, get rid of him. It's easy. This is not difficult. You probably get a deal if you, if you book him out, mm -hmm. you know, unless we have to fire him for some reason, right? We have a three-year contract with them. Book him out and schedule it. You probably get a better deal. Definitely. Powers and Sullivan as the auditors, you know, independent auditors, they are here to be helpful to work with us right. on this as well. So right. they're not throwing up any roadblocks up on us to gang things down. They're making sure we're doing everything correctly and that everything follows the law, but they're, uh, they're definitely not going to say, not do anything that's going to hurt us time-wise, you know, not say we can't book it at that time. So we can work with them on this. Mm -hmm. And I also think we did the six month review and everything looked pretty good on there. In between that six month review, Till now, something must have happened on the balances, right? Correct. So that's where the, where the yeah. issue is. Let's I would suggest fixed. we bring them in for the six month again on there, um, that six month review, but also that we're doing monthly reconciliations on there. That that's a big one. If it's going to take more time in the build, in the beginning, then we'll all we'll all have our lights on at night, working to get it done because we have to. Amen. And once this gets through on there, then life life will be on a normal pace. Because I do know that when I spoke to that Mr. Perry at one point in time over the last year and a half, he told me that uh, he felt that Powers and Sullivan was the best mm -hmm. for what we needed. For, for They I met do, our needs, absolutely. I do remember one conversation I had when they called me one day with Mark Andrews, and that's what that guy told me. Oh. that they were the best to have. So I think whatever you guys need to do to make sure they stay here and take care of this, you need to do it. You can't waste a consultant's time because that is money. They usually charge you if you cancel them. Did we pay for a cancellation? We did. They were actually very good about You're that. Very they lucky. were able to yeah. book somebody else during that time. Yeah. Um, very lucky. That's where I'm saying working with us. In other words, they didn't. 
fi fine us or punish us for that time. Yeah. Okay. Well, just a, one f final question, and um, please don't mistake this as directing, but it's a, it's a strong suggestion, certainly. And I've been beating this drum for a very long time. Are there policies and procedures in place in the um, accounting office, in the treasurer's office, or, or should there be for, say, monthly reconciliation so that there are no surprises? I mean, I can't imagine that I would have a surprise in my, own, my personal checking account. Of course, it def definitely helps now that we have separate ones because I would find surprises when my husband used his debit card. So I can kind of make that analogy for what's happening in the town. So if they're not in place, it may be something that needs to be done yesterday. Right. Because this seems to be um, a pattern for Wareham. I know that the Treasury Collector's Office has the policies procedures set up that they had written beforehand on there. Um, they had had some established already. So, uh, okay. Mrs. Begley has brought this up at least 50 times <laughs> since I've known her. And I sat through that god-awful meeting with the Finance Committee, was it? We've had yes. It? And sat there and listen to your former boss and others blame the Board of Selectmen because we didn't have a policy that said we should have monthly reconciliations. Well, I'm going to tell you, if this board has to write a policy for that, both of you guys need to go find another job. No, I do have a policy and procedure. I'm manual. just telling you, if she has to come back again and with a policy in her hand to tell our accounting department and our treasury department to reconcile books every month and we have to vote on it, I'm going to tell you, I'll be hell blazes to get rid of, rid of you guys, and we'll start from scratch. Because that's day-to-day -day operation, first of all. We shouldn't have to be writing policies. Right. That's nuts. I do have that in place. Is well, it, you know what you could do with that, please? If you wouldn't mind, email that to us so okay. that we can see it. And then we can hold those policies accountable. That's not day-to-day -day activity. Okay. But we shouldn't be writing policies for the finance department. Because it started off at uh, BMAG, an 80-page policy and procedure manual I think they got from Oxbridge and I've taken and truncated it down <coughs> so I want to I want to go through the manual of powers and solvent first and then I can send it to you yeah all right send it to us we really because that reminds me of that movie remember that I think I even spoke about it that day a few good men when the guy <laughs> said here's the marine handbook show me where that policy Correct. is and the guy said, oh, no, I just follow everybody else to go eat. Right. They, we don't have to tell you where the mess all is. Right. And we also, uh, I have the disaster right. recovery policy for uh, IT. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. But right now we're focused on getting these reconciliations done. Right. Right. Okay. Not beating you up, just we're tired of listening to this for th me now going on three years listening to the same stories for two years, same stories. These guys have been around a long time, but it's the first official story. We get First tired of reading the same story. book. I've got to be honest with you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. We look forward to seeing the procedures. Okay. Next, next up, George. Next oh, is guys, the discussion of the TDR. Can you guys sit up here with us, please? Hey, do you have, do you have a Which one, Charlie? you have a quorum? Just a verse. Is sure. this it? Is this the, is this the latest? Oh, is there a date on that anyway? It says December of 2011 all over the place. You know what? It might be still here. Oh, okay. Well, it must, be, have, it must have been copied one. then. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, it must have been copied then. That's the old original one. So, this is what I'm looking at then. That's the old original one. Then, this is the one I'm looking at then. Okay. I've got the right chair. I'm back to the camera. <laughs> he left. We've got to announce these two things. Are there announcements? Well, they're not on here, but they're just community service ones, so I think we can. Can we do it at the end? Yeah. So, sure we can.
here, Mr. Barrows. You guys, please make sure you sign Mr. Ah, uh, Mr. Barrows. Uh, for the record, George Barrett, Chairman of the Planning Board, and with me is Charlie Kleber, member of the Planning Charlie, Board. Charlie, good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. <laughs> it's nice to be here. TDR. Yes. Uh, I don't know how much this board is knows on uh, no, where we are on that, or where you want to start from. Well, if you'd start from the beginning. Okay, let me get the stack of papers out. Yeah. Well, you don't have to read 600 pages, but the Regis Digest version um, would be helpful. Back around 2005, I think it was, the uh, a zoning bylaw rewrite committee had been established. And as they were reviewing the, the bylaws and looking to make changes, even the organizational changes, uh, Makepeace came in and gave a brief presentation on transfer development rights. At that particular time, uh, Anthony Frangiatis, who was chair of that committee as well as chair of the planning board, told them that they'd be glad to hear them out, but that was a policy decision that either the planning board and the selectmen should, should move forward on. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it was, uh, that's the way it moved forward. They. That strictly informational and uh, until we came to the point where we actually did a, a PowerPoint presentation with the Board of Selectmen. This one here, Josh? Yeah, mm -hmm. that looks like it. And uh, a couple of drafts were created of a transfer development rights bylaw. Uh, briefly, you know, uh, transfer development rights is just that, where you have a donor parcel and receiving parcel and the rights of development that are uh, as of right to that parcel can be moved to another. Uh, we discussed transfer between parcels of the same owner and transfer of partners with dis different owners. Uh, the Tai Honet Village was one uh, example. We also picked out parcels in East Wareham that could be receiving parcels. Uh, I think there was more work to be done on how, when you have two different parties sending and receiving, I think there was some legal work that had to be done there. Um, but anyway, uh, it kind of fell by the wayside with, uh, I guess, uh, a stalemate would be an adequate description. People couldn't decide on the numbers. A lot of numbers were being misinterpreted. Anyway, uh, I think it's time to at least revisit it and see if we want to move forward with it. Let me just, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, familiar with it, mm -hmm. George, so be a weird, stupid question. No. Nope. You say East Wareham. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say one that comes to mind to me, and you know that hotel, on Cranberry Highway. Pick one. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah. closed. Which one? It's up near us. It's closed. White Pines? White Pines? White Pines. Maybe I'll White Pines. It it's got some garbage property on there, right? Mm -hmm. And then behind that, there's a, a railroad track mm -hmm. runs right behind there. Then there's a parcel of land, right? And then there's another parcel of land that's owned by Bay Point, I think, right? So there's one, two, with the rail. Three, four. I so let's let's say that if the guy from Bay Point bought all that property, and it was mm -hmm. all owned by Bay Point, right? Mm -hmm. and, the, and so, what does this mean on the Route Six corridor? That's commercial. Is that what we're talking about? Changing mm -hmm. the zoning and the ability to do what he wants with that? Is that no. What you what you'd be creating is an overlay, where uh, you have your existing zoning, mm -hmm. and what this would allow. It very something very similar to what we have in the villages, a density like you'd have in Onset Village or Wayham Village, but you would do so by taking the development rights over, say, on the Onset Well Field, say, where you uh, you have open, you have forested land. Rather than develop that piece, you'd say, okay, we're going to put a conservation restriction here and not develop that not build any infrastructure, roadways, 
water, sewer, all that. But we're going to take that, den that housing and condense it into this area. So one of the areas we spoke of was the uh, location of the, where the cannery, if anybody knows, <laughs> showing my age, yeah. calling it a cannery. Peter's place in the corner. The place yeah, that, the that burnt. Right. The whole right. That whole. The whole club. Property. That's a good example. Then give us an example. That of was that, that was a place that w would be well suited to an increased density village type. Uh, How would that work? Right now, you have the you have the burnt out section, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have the the lot. You have the buildings that are currently rented out to a bunch of people, right? Different vendors and things. Mm -hmm. So how would that work? If he were to develop that and want to put maybe retail office on the first floor and some sort of housing over it, okay, he would, I think what was uh, proposed in here was like a one and a half to one exchange rate. For every unit you took from the donor parcel, you could build one and a half housing units there. Uh, what the what the bylaw also did was capped the density. So while you might be able to build 50 units, your density would be around eight units per acre, which is similar to Wayham Village, Onset Village. That's to, to kind of visualize what that density looks like. Um, Say so it's a lot easier to deal with when the donor and the receiver are the same person. When no, you get into a sense, situation right? like East Wayham, they may have to purchase those rights from somebody else, or uh, somebody you know they may even volunteer them just so that you know it saves a lot of money on both ends to so the builder and for the town that has to maintain that infrastructure later on. I think the biggest one we've had, not in Wareham, but in Plymouth, I believe, uh, I think it was AD Make Peace Land, they, they donated, or didn't donate, but they did a TDR on several hundred acres of land. Because I know, obviously, I think Peter was there, the dedication of the governor, and in turn they used the TDR for the rights when they did the River Run project as an offset. Plymouth yeah. did the whole thing. I'm very familiar with the TDR process. Of course, my late mother was involved in negotiations with making these for years over yeah. TDRs. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it, 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 as George says, basically you're, you're taking a large parcel, you're saying we're not going to develop this uh, on three acre zoning or something like that. Uh, what we're asking for is to take the houses we could have built here and, and not wreck that area right. and instead uh, get out of three acre zoning and be able to that number of houses over here the sort of so there has to be some usable land for the exchange to be, to be fair yes that's what i'm be. saying so it wouldn't be say for example um it was a bog they they were no longer going to use and it was land that we couldn't that couldn't be developed anyway it would have to be something yeah. that yeah, could be in, developed. in the bylaw, the bog and wetland areas are eliminated from the calculation. They're they don't excluded. just they don't okay. just take. So there's a net usable land factor. Yes. It's mm -hmm. not so if if for example it was 20 acres, but less than a third of that was the bogs. The net usable land would be two thirds of that acreage. Mm -hmm. So that may be considered. Okay. Right. Oh, and, good. And, and then going forward, if you're viewing that as one, one, one parcel, what they would do is say, we want to get out from under the three acres zoning here to build houses, preserve half of the land uh, that's developable in exchange for, say, one and a half acre zoning on the portion that we intend to develop. So that's, that's where the transfer comes in. But that portion that you give up or you say, we're not going to touch this. Right. You put a, a restriction There's on There's a conservation that. restriction right. on that. It's and that's a, it, and it's so in that, perpetuity, and yes. it's a deed re action. It's a deed restriction. Oh, it's recorded over in the registry of deeds. The mm -hmm. actual notice to, be sure. <laughs> to the world. So, yeah. so that, you know, 10 years from now, somebody can't say, oh, oh hey, no. let's put up. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. So the developer, does the developer have to meet, say this is, say, let's keep it simple for you, George, and it's 
<laughs> it's the same person. Talk George slow. needs to keep it simple Talk for slow. us. No, no, no. Because he keeps okay. saying to me, it's going to get very complicated if you have two separate okay. people. So let's keep, keep it simple, simple George. Yeah. And it's the same person. If the person, um, say, it's going to be this acreage that's close to um, some of the acreage that we already possess. I can't think of anything on, on off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be an exchange that happens. The, where they develop, does it have to meet a certain criteria with affordable housing, open space, and the master plan, or is it strictly zoning? The, well, first of all, we would, in the bylaw, or as an addendum to the bylaw, we would identify the areas that would be donors and receivers. You, you would map that out from, and if you, at later dates, if you wanted to create new ones, it would be, I believe, a, a town meeting act to create new donor parcels and, and uh, receiving parcels. Uh, as far as what the exchange rate is, there are different ways to do it. You can give bonuses for affordable, you can do bonuses for senior, you can do bonuses for workplace housing, which is kind of like affordable. But it's not, you, it's it not the initial on, criteria. You, could, you would offer a bonus if, if, they, if they... Well, there are some bonuses uh, illustrated in that draft bylaw, mm -hmm. but you're not limited to that. You can create new ones and put them in the bylaw. Mm -hmm. uh, and that changes it. You, know, you, may, not, you may want to uh, identify other types of housing that you want to encourage and give them a density bonus for that. So the only ones that can take advantage of this TDR are people that already own, our landowners in Wareham. Yeah, yeah. yeah. really. Um, unless you they can't. Go, unless they go out and buy the rights or something. Well, if you have a large landowner, or even I think, to, if I remember right, we may have, we may have identified 10 acres and above. I'd have to read through it again. But if you have a property owner that wants to sell his uh, development rights, then, you know, that that's a detail you could work out uh, if mm -hmm. you wanted to sell to somebody that didn't possess any open space or, or, uh, or even somebody that is identified right up front, if they have more than they need, they could perhaps sell or transfer those development rights to a, a third party or second party rather. Can you can you describe the, the advantages to this program and, and and can you have you guys as uh, I know you've worked on it for a long time identified any of if you have any reservations about any of this do you see any complications <coughs> arising from this or is it do you really see it as just strictly advantages to the town well the advantages are the town will have less uh, infrastructure to take care of mm -hmm. you know if you build out all these roadways we're going to have to uh, take care of them. I, I suppose it's proportional. The, the tax coming in is, should offset it, but it never is. Uh, so you have that. You have the uh, aesthetic advantage of creating villages rather than big sprawling subdivisions. Uh, for the developer or the proponent, they save money on that infrastructure. They get to build a, a more, uh, I don't want to say engineered <coughs> project, but a, a better designed village. You know, most of our, uh, although most of our NASA areas were kind of by accident before zoning. So. Mm -hmm. But you can, you can plan things out better. You can try to come up with a better project when you're dealing with one whole project rather than a piece here and a piece mm -hmm. there. And, we're doing this possible. We're not telling you what you're doing on that parcel. You know, that's a constant challenge in planning is trying to tie everything together, and you can with a plan like this. Plus, you're going to preserve land. I understand. Mm -hmm. But it's restricted to a certain size parcel. Yeah, and I, I apologize. I think it was 10 acres, but it may There's be. There's a couple references in here. Because yeah. we're not talking, and, and I'm sure we're going to hear this on town meeting floor, we're not talking about the tiny lot that's buildable because sewer went by in, on, on Shell Point. 
We're talking about. I thought we were talking about something big. No, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm saying we're be, not you talking be taking about this. individual lots. And, and that's right. what I'm concerned about. Will come up on town meeting floor is that people are going to think that we're talking about these small buildable lots, oh, no. and that's not the case. So it's a larger scale. No, this is for parcels and so dozens, this, if, hundreds, or even thousands of acres. If I have this in my head correctly, and I just drew two squares on this piece of paper, I own both of these parcels of land. Yeah. Right. And I could build uh, 10 acres. I could build 10 houses here, right? Mm -hmm. All right, and I can build 10 houses here. They're both 10 acres, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And what I'm going to say to the town is, hey, look, I'm never going to touch this 10 acres. You put a restriction on it. I'm never going to touch this, right? And what you're saying to me is, but on the second piece, I'm going to create a village, and I might get... 25 apartments, sort of, or, you might or less, put 20 right? houses, or you because there's a cap. Well, it wouldn't be a house because well, there's well, right now, houses on 10 acres? right now, you can do that. You can do that under a cluster well, yeah. development yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. zone. So, is, um, so you can do this today. Yeah. So what's the difference between this and this? What's the advantage it's a, to the It's developer? a much larger scale when you're dealing with the transfer of development rights. Okay. Uh, and. I believe with the transfer, your your remaining land would be more accessible because you wouldn't. Generally, when you do the cluster, the the open space belongs to the owners of the in the, within the cluster, mm -hmm. right? Uh, unless they deed it out. But, uh, What's the advantage to the developer? They get a they get a bonus factor if they would have put. Under this form here, with the regular projections, if they were to put a one or two bedroom single family house, they get a 1.1 factor, or 1.2. If they were to do um, dwelling units located over non residential, they get a 1.4 factor. Well, and what right? does the factor mean? In other words, the density, instead of, instead of one unit, they get 1.4 units. I understand. So that it's, it increases the density available. I understand. So that's the advantage to the developer. The and we're advantage. saying that the advantage to the town is that we um, are trying to prevent sprawl. sprawl. And preserve open space. And, well, open space. preventing sprawl yeah. is preservation of open space. So the, other, the other piece to this, uh, yes. Selectman Begley, is that the developer also benefits from reduced infrastructure costs. If you only have to put roads uh, on part of your parcel as opposed to the entire parcel, you're, you're paying your, your road contractor a lot less. You're paying your, your, the person who clears the land a lot less because they're not clearing as much land. Uh, you, you lay less uh, sewer pipe if you're, for example, in a sewer area. You have uh, your cesspools, are, you can use you know, common cesspools under a common cesspool scheme as opposed to things being so far apart that you couldn't do it. So they save money that way as well. But the, it would be high density area. It would end up being whatever was developed would be, yeah, higher density. It, it would be a higher normal. density than allowed under current zoning. It under doesn't necessarily mean so, okay. the, the area would turn out to be high density. It would just be a higher density. I would guess, be allowed so. under the current zoning bylaws. Right. Mm -hmm. I'd say here's what I'm hearing. Like um, the barber in Onset Village. He has the shop downstairs where uh -huh. you cut your hair. And upstairs he has Apartments. residential, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He gets a 1.4. If you put that into if, the if, if you were in a new, new uh, you know I understand yeah. that. But yeah. So if you had 30 of those, you're going to put it on this property, yeah. and then you, that's a big lot. But that's the kind of when you when Same you talk about idea. the compaction, that's yeah. what you're talking. You're talking about. about a system which is what they call a sustainable development. It's a village concept, and these are the sustainability. Right. Because going forward, because we do all the sprawl, it's no longer sustainable. This is one way to put us into a system. That you I got that get, part. You get little villages. But there. the ingredients of the village are like the barber shop. Same idea. Uh, so you're, yeah, it's that's, hopeful that's that it would be retail might scale. be in there yes, on a smaller scale. You can scale. negotiate all these things. That's the but beauty of the TDR. For, like, I mean, when anybody goes that, to huh? Vail or any of those right? places in Colorado and they have those little yeah. villages that have right, and that's um, what that's retail on the first floor and homes on the second floor. Right. It's a, you can prioritize what you want. When you're the town and you're on the, you're on the town side negotiating things, you go to the negotiation and you prioritize those things that you're looking for mm -hmm. and you try to get the developer to agree to a higher value 
uh, for those things, and then the things that the developer may want that you're not so happy about, you try to negotiate down a lower value for those. So, so who this is a does the negotiation in this? TDM? And and as you said, it puts the planning even board. though you have a bylaw, it does put the negotiation at the planning board. The planning board. You know, so all so the negotiations are on the planning board. It does well where you when you go into a regular subdivision, a lot of what they offer is as a right. They're you know. Mm -hmm. they're, but when it comes to this process, we have a lot more uh, latitude in what we can grant and what we can deny. So the planning board would do all the negotiations with the developer? Yeah, because this is all so these are all zoning issues. Which is but does zoning get involved? So it's not entering into any kind of contract? Well, not the ZBA, no. That's just an appeals board. I believe, I believe the draft. I did, have that, but I didn't, didn't highlight leave it. Leave the selectman in the loop also, I believe. Oh, you have bigger print. They were the last time. <laughs> yeah. And those selectmen and an alternate check selectmen selected, I think, Mary Jane. But the, the, prim was the primary, uh, well, the well, primary well, mover yeah, of what, this is the planning board. What I would anticipate is once they go through the planning draft. process and we come to an agreement, then you guys would, or was ever in your chairs, would look at it and say yay and nay. Planning to get rid of us? You can have that. It's an easy document. Thank you. It's bigger print. Well, it says in terms of the in terms of assigning the value, the planning board may, in its own exclusive judgment, determine yep. the lesser number. Right? Because yeah, again, it's, it's all land zoning issues. So if if page 20 for for mitigation, you already do mitigation now. Yeah. No. Or is that zoning? In in regards to developers, you don't do any kind of well, like Union, you know, when Union Pond had. Union Pond went through ZBA because it was an affordable unit, but well, yes, they, they negotiated the mitigation there. Yes. Do so these have it, to be affordable? No. They don't no, have it to It could be, be but they get a big, they get kind of a bonus they if it bonus. is. You, get, you hang the carrot out there. Right. So they get, get a bigger bonus if they have affordable housing. housing. Well, you know, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, they've always talked about behind the house here at Bay Point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the country club. They've talked a lot about putting housing in there, which has always been an issue as to how many, you know, 80s and 80, is it 80, is it 90, is it 120? Nobody could ever get an answer from it. So in my mind, as I'm looking at this picture, I'm thinking, okay, we're never gonna touch whole 16, 17, and 18. You're gonna put a restriction on that. But over here, and we're gonna transfer that over here, <coughs> and we're gonna build a little, vision, a little village over here, like where the, uh, what do you call that? Uh, the pavilion is. We're going to mm -hmm. build a village. Yeah. Is that the kind of stuff we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, you, have similar. you been approached by anybody you can't, about any you, of this? It won't be like on a whim that you're going to decide that I'm going to take rights from this side of my land or that side of the land. Those, donor, those giving and receiving parcels will be identified. I know I'm making it sound simplistic, but that's how I have to understand it. Yeah, <laughs> but those will be identified but that's the kind up front. We're talking about right. But yeah, those, are, those are identified up front because you have to know what the parcels are in yeah. order to in, uh, legally enforce any restrictions. Yeah. So, right. you know, a, a landowner comes to you and says, "I want to take my parcel number one, and my parcel is number two." And do this here, and transfer the, what I could do on number two over to number one. And then when you when you're done with it, when your TDR is, is finished, when it's approved, when it's when it's in place, then that all gets recorded in the registry of deeds. But so you have to start with a known parcel of land as the initial <coughs> but I mean, the, the, starting point. Uh, I sounds like to me. Mike. Hate to name names, but the yes, the yes. classic illustration yeah, is is to make these properties when they created their three me. large subdivisions. Right. Uh, I forget the names of them, but it's, it's in the vicinity of 1,100 acres total. And I think I heard numbers back then of 400 plus right. house, housing units could be built there as right. of right. Now, do you? take those development rights and take 200 and transfer it in, get it off your aquifer and your watershed, and leave all that undeveloped land and concentrate it into an area that's partially developed already. It so, makes sense. So you don't anticipate that this is going to be some uh, a, a small, I'm going to say small, but it's certainly not true anymore in Wareham. 
um, someone that owns 20 acres and 10 acres happen to be over here and 10 acres <coughs> happen to be over there. You're kind of talking about kind of major landowners that have already forecasted their five-year, 10-year, and 20-year plans. This is more geared towards something like that. I'm not discounting someone who's t who owns 20 acres and 10 acres over here and 10 acres over there, because mm -hmm. then they may very well fit the criteria. But you're saying that this is more? It, 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 is, it is a large-scale mm -hmm. uh, operation. We identified uh, that landowner. We looked at some other property off of Glen Charlie Road that would be suitable as a donor parcel and again like the oceans the old ocean spray complex would be a, a suitable yeah, as a receiving that's parcel that's, that's what i'm thinking because uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking cause when you like a golf course or, or something maybe may, i don't know a lot about make piece land but make piece is big with the that's what i'm saying to, to, yeah, typically that they're on scales of well however like it can be it doesn't discount the landowner that say owns 20 acres, right, but they happen to be in separate no, parcels. This, so it doesn't dis it 10, doesn't right? discount a smaller developer that came in and no, purchased they can do those the same, two. They can do right. The same thing. So they it could doesn't discount. planning and negotiate one of these out and uh, proceed But in, in your initial bylaw, you want to identify more than one landowner, more than one. I would think so because, because then, then it just looks like you know, you're, you're writing it right. for the one landowner. Exactly. You, right, that's to, my concern. For this to have any legs, you, you but do that's have my to, concern. that's why we looked at other areas that would... Well, you kind of do it like the B-Dot was done. You identify parcels of a certain size or over, and then you go from there. And that's mm -hmm. kind of kind of how that works. Yeah. Yes, I, but I, this I, gets a little more specific. Right, than, as, as to the contents. Oh, sure. Yeah. Not to be rude again tonight, but I, I wanted to get this started, because this is big. I think this is very important. What do you think our next steps are? Do you think it's easier? Do you for want us to come on a Monday? Oh, to a planning board meeting? Have it, let's have a joint. I think our next step in is the, to have a joint meeting. In the past. That, we can do that. We, is it easier for us to go on a Monday or to bring them in on a Tuesday and we got all this other stuff going on and we can't focus on this? What do you think? Monday. What Easier we, is a separate day, I think. Are you good question. on Mondays? I know Friday's I'm, a new meeting. No, I'm good on a Monday. Um, I know Selectman Winslow works on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. However, if we seven, could block seven. off a time oh, for this, but if we could block off a time for this, that it would, it would be simply dedicated to this, that would be awesome. That would be, that would be best. Would you want to go through this PowerPoint presentation? Uh, yes. We did that. Yeah, it would be beneficial for the We did that before it, yeah. with the, well, the Selectman and some of the stakeholders in this. I think this would be nice. And it was very helpful. And it, this would be a public hearing as well. No? So it's always it would be, a, oh, it'd be a presentation. Uh, I it's think. a workshop. No, 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 no. I'm not saying, but in the future, of oh, course, yeah. there'd be a public hearing. Mm -hmm. well, well, maybe you want, would you want to do this yeah, on a Tuesday? The negotiations if, going forward if, will all be public hearings. Well, first, yes. Okay, guys, hang on oh. a second. Let me just try to get to the next step. Would you, would you guys want to do this on a Tuesday if we blocked off, say, 7.30 to 8.30, quarter of nine, just blocked it off? If we have any licenses, we'll do them. And just do this. If, if that's what you want to do. I and think we public, would have you to would rather, see it. Uh, you would rather do it on an off night where you can kick it around a while, that's fine too. Well, but. this is all we would do. Yeah. There'd okay. be nothing else on that agenda. Okay. We could do a joint meeting. On mo right? a Monday would probably be better. We have so much going on. Um, During the regular As meetings. a select well, that's board what I'm on trying Tuesdays. To establish. If yeah. we're going to do this and spend the time, it's either going to be on Tuesday night or it's going to be on a Monday night at their Hello. meeting. Right. Um, Mr. Chair, it's five minutes of seven. I know. I'm just trying to get a quick answer. Monday so is what better. Time, Kara, what time can you make a meeting on a Monday night? Can you make a can you make a Monday at seven? Depends on what Monday it is. Well, it'd be one of the four or five. <laughs> well, I mean, you gotta you gotta tell me. It'd be one of their planning board meetings. It, it could be an off Monday too, if you want. Yeah. Second and fourth Monday. Second and fourth. So we could do it like the first or the third. So I can't do this coming Monday, but the following Monday I could do. But that's yeah. your regular meeting. Every other week, so my every other week no, is it's next week. No, the fifth week. is our regular meeting. November. That's the fifth. What are you talking November about? 5th. The fifth you could. That's a regular, okay. that's that's a regular, that's a regular meeting, and they need it. Yes. So, no, the Why, fifth is, is their regular meeting, and I'm sure you have an agenda. We'll have an announcement. No, no problem. But the fifth, Mr. Chair, is probably their regular meeting, and they may very well no, it's have. No, the second Monday. No, okay, second. second. So the fifth. Yeah. Okay. So I can't. Oh. I can't do the twenty fifth. <laughs> so I can do the fifth. You wanna? You wanna schedule the fifth, George? Yeah. You wanna check with the other folks? 
Uh, who, do, who does the presentation, you guys? No, you don't have to. Uh, we need yeah. to bring somebody in. Do you, who did this presentation? Uh, Anthony did uh, did mm -hmm. that presentation. Uh, I can see if she's available. If she wants to yeah. do it, fine. Yeah, she's, yeah, it'd be fine. So the 5th at 7 p.m.? Is that we'll what we're saying? Or? Where do you guys meet? Where do you want to do this? You want to do in it? the um, selectman's office? Cafeteria. I mean, the selectman's Yeah, we need some place where we can do PowerPoint, so that would be easy Do you want to go to the, the selectman's room? We can yeah. use the selectman zoom and, and reset the front of that so we can all sit yeah. together and we got the big machine there. You can make popcorn. 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 Yeah. popcorn. Yeah. You want to do it there? And you're going to bring the beer? Sure. Oh. Yeah. I thought that was already there. And I'll have Shirley, I'll have Shirley post Winslow. that. Sorry. That'd be great <laughs> to get this going. Yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Winslow yeah. arrived at 6.55. And you're going to have somebody do the presentation so they can get the, the oh. thing up to us and get oh. it plugged in. Well, we have, the, we have it on CD already. Derek, you take care of that for the fifth. Make sure the power. I think you're out of luck, working. Gary, but thanks for coming. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank, thank you very much. We appreciate thank you. this. Um, it's, uh, thanks, sorry that it's just a little crazy. And then what do we do? I'm a healthcare out, guy, right? Boot you so out and do, do our scheduled planning board meeting that night? Is that what we sorry? do? Sorry. And then we boot you out and do our regular planning yes. board meeting? Yeah. That's not your regular night to me. No, the fifth is. You mean the 12th? Oh, we yeah, but we're not. Uh, it's an off night for all of us. Tulsa holiday or whatever. You know, be, Mr. Chair. Did we say uh, we were going to meet the 5th? We, did, we yeah. did say the 5th because the Gary time. said he just needs one minute of our time. Yeah, come on up. Yeah. Come on up. Yeah, it's they're, just they're that. Gonna, they're going to cut us off in two minutes. Well, he said he needs he's, one. He's got, he's got less than two. Mr. Buckminster. We need a motion to approve your uh, permit and expenditures. Every, every couple of years we have to review the harvest. George, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was very good. <laughs> Every year we have to review the Harvest Service permits. Um, I was requested to give um, to, uh, some pricing. Yeah. This is what I've come up with. I've, there's a comparison attached to your forms. Of all the towns I did a comparison with, we fall right in the middle of the lane with everybody. So um, I feel that this is a pretty good step in the right direction. It's not too damaging for people to uh, cover the costs. And uh, there's a breakdown there. There's a motion attached uh, if you wish to use that. Yeah. I don't see it. Permits On the last page of this one. Permits $75 plus $2 a foot from $60 plus $1 a foot. The mooring onlys, which are the uh, people that have their moorings that are listed with no vessel, would go from $60 to $125. That gives them motivation to use them or get rid of them. Um, and the, there's a establishment fee of $50. That's for to cover the cost of us going out, having to locate the areas, all the fun stuff that goes along with it. And... Uh, Motion should have all the information. All right. that. I'll make okay. a